Hello, welcome to the talk with T. Renee. I'm your host, T. Renee Mathis, and I have my special guest. I have a crush on him, Dr. Jeff. Thank you for coming to the show. Dr. Jeff, you've been everywhere. CNBC, um, Fox, um, uh, uh, Atlanta Housewives, VH1, you've been every, everywhere. Loving yes, your path. Yes, yes, yes. You're here with this documentary. We're talking about um, depression, specifically um, depression in the African American um, culture. It differs, I think, from our other white counterparts, does it not? Well, we see that um, depression, uh, as well as many other mental illnesses, express themselves differently because of the idea that we all come from different cultures, ethnicities, religions, and so on. And so the manifestation in this particular case of depression does, in fact, express itself in a different way in the black population. So, for example, we may see uh, perhaps a lot more self-destructive behaviors, uh, maybe a lot more precociousness in sexuality, uh, acting out as far as uh, crimes and so on, and not to stereotype and say that's what black people are about, but I'm just talking about when we're looking at depression in itself uh, and how it may manifest itself in a very different way. But at the same time, it also manifests itself in very traditional ways. Um, anger, anxiety, um, issues with sleep, issues with appetite, uh, self-medication with uh, drugs and alcohol and sex, and of course the idea that people who are depressed are extremely sad to the point of where they have no physical or even psychological mobility. And we talked about that. Um, I shared briefly earlier today that my brother died of cancer, stage four. Um, 44, thank you, nine months he was gone. And this is my everything. He, he knows about my dreams and all that. But when they told my brother, a black man, that you have stage four cancer and you're going to die from that, he became a different person. And as a result, our family structure was gone. And... How can, we, how can we begin to change that when there's depression, he's not coming back? How can we begin to even carve out a, a life without depression? Well, I think we need to be very honest with ourselves that depression is part of life. I mean, there are those times in our lives when we're very up and things are working the way that we want it to, and we have a lot of positive mood. And then those times where life can be overwhelming, where we can be extremely stressed, where we can be extremely tired emotionally and therefore physically and even manifest disease as part of that. But I think the most important thing is that we try to have some sort of a balance uh, where even when we're dealing with something like a depression or we're dealing with someone as your, as your dearly departed brother who had a cancer, uh, instead of falling apart as a family, supporting one another, just being there, just listening, just being that shoulder to cry on, just, if nothing else, um, standing side by side with someone as they go through that very, very difficult part of their lives and just showing as much love as possible. And really it's about showing black men that it's okay to cry, it's okay to have these feelings, right? Absolutely, and I, I will say to all the black men out there, yes, it is okay to cry because that is where you're brave. You know, Montel Williams, um, who I did his show quite often, uh, I think he was one of the first African-American men, certainly on television, to often cry, and a lot of people made fun of him. Um, and I just was always very proud that Montel had the courage and the strength to be able to cry and say, I'm still a man, and you guys know know that Montel is very much a man, even going through, you know, some illnesses that he's dealing with. He's still, still just a very, very strong person. So yes, it is okay to cry. I've got to tell you, I've cried myself. Absolutely. Especially after a 20 year divorce and the alimony I had to pay. I'm still crying <laughs> right now. But you also have to learn to laugh too, along with that pain. I love that because we're joking, but we respect you and we look up to you. So if, if Dr. Jeff, who is successful, um, has a family, if you're telling us that, oh, yeah, it got rough, I cried, then we know. Yeah. Yeah. 
that, that you can all do it too, and it's okay. And you know what? It is a very much what we call a catharsis. In other words, emoting, letting it out, because when you hold on to that pain, you will find you're going to be exhausted, mm -hmm. you're going to be depressed, you may end up manifesting all sorts of illnesses, you're going to self-medicate with food, alcohol, sex in a way that may I've be done very it. safe. I'm glad that you're able to say that. Um, and so I just think it's very, very important that you be able to express yourself. That's the most important thing. Find someone who is willing to listen, and you should be available for someone to be their ear because it really is about the communication. We are all social animals. Absolutely. Dr. Jeff, it's been a long day and I don't want to hold you anymore, but I thank you. Also, what I love about it is that we talked about, you guys were talking about giving back. You're giving back to me. I'm an up and coming um, um, journalist and I, I, I thank you that you took time to work on this very personal project that I know that I'm, I'm, a, I'm trying to aspire to, to do some great things like you're doing. And I thank you for talking to the talk with T. Renee. Well, T. Renee, first of all, let me say that you're not aspiring to greatness. There is greatness. You are greatness. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey. So enjoy your success each and every day. There you have it, Dr. Jeff. You are with me. I love you guys. It's Hugh and Mathis. The talk with Hugh and Thank you. There's no more skin.